Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And tonight, in the first national semifinal, the seven-time champion Connecticut Huskies face the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who defeated UConn in last year's Final Four in what has become the hottest rivalry in women's college hoops today. Now, for the first time ever, all four teams in the Final Four have won national championships. UConn, Notre Dame, Stanford, and Baylor. And it's just the second time the four number one seeds have all made it through to the semifinals. We come to you live from the floor of the Pepsi Center here in downtown Denver. Great to have you. And of course, this is the Final Four 2012. I'm Dave O'Brien alongside my partner, Doris Burke, Holly Rowe, and Rebecca Lobo joining us in just a little while. Great to be back with you for another Final Four. Oftentimes for national championships, any championship, there's a debate about whether the right teams, the best teams are actually here. There's absolutely no debate. We have the best four teams in America here. And a certain comfort level for Connecticut and Stanford having played here five straight years. You've got an Irish team that a little bit of unfinished business, losing in the national title game a year ago. Baylor has the most dominant player in the country, but Brittany Griner has yet to put a national title next to her resume. Will she walk out of here with one? Should be a great game, too, as well. Now in game one, take us to the one-on-one, -on -one and one of the most charismatic players in America, the Notre Dame star, Skylar Diggins. In fact, a national media poll voted her the point guard of the year. She combines great physical basketball ability with tremendous IQ earned in the film room. She is dynamic, along with her counterparts, off the dribble, whether in a pick and roll, in the open floor in transition she is dangerous Connecticut decided under coach Oriyama their best shot to win was to be the stingiest defense in the country they play on a string and in concert and only want to give up tough twos and they have been the best in the country at just that UConn head coach Gino Oriyama is seeking a record tying eighth national championship that would tie Pat Summit with whom he had that touching meeting yesterday on this court. Gino then struggled to compose himself afterwards. Time now for the Capital One. Meet the players. Here's the UConn Huskies. Tiffany Hayes, number three, senior. And I like to sing, but only in the shower. Stephanie Nelson, number 31, sophomore. And my favorite show to watch is Glee. Kelly Ferris, number 34, junior, and I love to eat, and at one point I ate a 32-ounce prime rib. Ah! Rhea Hartley, number 14, sophomore, and I'm a little clumsy, even though I look coordinated on the court. Caroline Doty, number 5, junior, and I enjoy editing videos. <laughs> Kalina Mosqueda Lewis, 23, freshman. I have a year and a half old baby, brother. We turn to Holly Rowe now, and Holly, Connecticut used to dominate Notre Dame in this series, but the Irish have beaten them three out of the last four. What's changed? Well, after the second time Notre Dame beat UConn this season, it was the turning point for the Huskies. They had a players-only meeting. They decided they had to become more accountable to each other. Stephanie Dolson told me she stood up and said, look, I will be better. Many players agreed to do that, and this group now trusts each other. They've won every game since that meeting, including one in the Big East final against you against Notre Dame. Do you know Oriama said that this group trusts each other now? And when he asked them today, how are you feeling compared to how you felt last year? Ready, better, worse? This group said, Coach, we are so much more ready to see how it plays out on the floor. Now let's meet the Notre Dame starting lineup. Devereaux Peters, number 14, fifth year senior. And I'm a perfume fanatic. I love perfume. Skylar Diggins, number four, junior, and I'm a Twitter junkie. Follow me on Twitter. Brittany Mallory, number 22, fifth year senior, and I love shoes. I'm a shoeaholic. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Novoselt, number 21, senior, and I only like the bottoms of muffins and not the tops. Kayla McBride, number 23, sophomore, and I store my M&Ms by color before I eat them. 
Well, Notre Dame is back in the Final Four for the second year in a row. Head coach Muffin McGraw won the national title in 2001, and this group is the most experienced and tested she has ever had. We bring in the All-American Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca, you're not far from the free throw line area. Why are you expecting that area to be so vitally important tonight? Well, Dave, offensively, Notre Dame can be deadly when they're allowed to catch the ball at the elbow area of the free throw line. In basketball, this is valuable real estate, and here's why. When Natalie Achanwa catches the ball at the high post, she has many options. She has strong side screening option. Skylar Diggins can go either way. Ultimately, Natalie Novosel gets the shot. There are too many options. And Dave, it'll be UConn's job to keep the ball out of that elbow area and limit those multiple scoring options. Well, of course, the national champion Huskies of 2010 set the NCAA record for field goal percentage defense at 30%. This UConn team can break that record. They're holding opponents to 29.9. They've been better than anybody. So ready for the opening tip. Notre Dame in the whites. Olsen bats it to Doty. We're underway as UConn wins the opening tip. 33 and 4 coming in. Notre Dame at 34 and 3. Olsen on a high post where she can be a deadly passer. Hartley back to Tiffany Hayes coming off arguably the best game she's ever had. The senior of Connecticut goes with a hard roll to the basket. Well, the Irish open man to man. As important as that free throw line is to the Irish, Connecticut, as you can see there, also does an exceptional job entering to the free throw line and working off that area. UConn showing early pressure in the backcourt, but McBride breaks that. Kayla McBride handing off here. One of the really tested players as Mallory goes inside for two. The 5'11 graduate from Baltimore. Well, and that's not necessarily her game. She usually leaves that to Natalie Novosel, Skylar Diggins, and Kayla McBride. So interesting to see that she starts aggressively. Very aggressive as she plucks that one away. A theft for Mallory. Diggins with her first touch to drive the lane. Gives it up for Novosel. She'll heave it up and knock down the three. To me, the Irish are the most complete offensive team still standing in the tournament. It'll be a real challenge for the nation's best defense to take away everything. These might be the two best passing teams in the country. Would you agree? Oh, no, no question. And their assist totals represent that. Lodi swinging it to Dolson again. She tends to start hard in, uh, very, very hot in games, and she's done that a couple of times in this tournament. Here's Mallory from three, a long one. Got a great look, but in and out. Gino Oriema was telling us during his shoot around yesterday, he thinks these rims are exceptionally tight. Well, they're brand new, and he said shooters who, who are smooth, like a Kalena Mosqueda Lewis, who touch nothing but the net, it won't bother. But anybody who needs a little bit of a touch to it, it might, uh, the hits orange, it's going to bounce out. Dolson, good look up top. Can't knock it down. Novosel with a rebound for the Irish. We score 79 points a game. They're the top scoring team in the field. Novosel draws the foul on the jump shot. She'll go to the line to shoot two as we take a look at Connecticut and Notre Dame's game plans for success. Well, for their Connecticut, when they have started to win games down the stretch, they have been excellent on the glass. And when they've lost games to the Irish, turnovers have been an issue. On the other side, rebounding has been something that Muppet McGraw has stressed over and over. And because we've talked so much about Connecticut's defense, your shot selection to me is, is the initial part of your defense. If you take poor shots, it's like a turnover in the open floor. You put yourself at risk on the other end. Game plan for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. That foul is on Kelly Ferris. So Notre Dame with a nice start, leading it 7-2. Ferris on the drive, tosses it deep into the corner. Doty tried to save it, managed to do that. Hartley and a foul with 17.37 to go here in the first half. And she tried to fight through a screen, and that'll go against Skylar Diggins. Her first. Uh, you know, associate head coach Jonathan Sippas said something interesting. We've talked a little bit, and the studio show touched on this. This is the eighth time in two years these two teams have played. Part of the mystique is gone. You know, you're looking opposite a UConn team that's won seven national titles. Sometimes that intimidates opponents, not the Irish. Doty has that one clang away, but Dolson cleans it up. 70 Dolson, the 6'5 sophomore. And these are two teams, we talk about familiarity, breeding content. It's happened with these teams. They do not like each other at all. 
Novoselic with a tough dribble, gives it off to Peters for two. Well, there's a reason for that. I mean, rivalries are built when something important's at stake, whether we're talking about a Big East championship or in last year's national semifinals where, you know, Connecticut gets upset. Not sure if that was a pass or a shot, but it got inside to Dolson, and she was able to knock it down. Well, tremendous start. You know, Deborah Peters, poor pass and decision by Deborah Peters. Hayes with the pick, the little teardrop. That'll roll in, and no whistle on the play, but she gets the basket. Well, it's noticeably absent, the whistle, and I kind of like it. You heard that uh, expression in the postseason, let him play, and that's what's happening. Gino Oriema has kind of planted that seed, a leaner by McBride. A lot of iron, but it won't drop. Now uh, tipped away to Peters. Notre Dame will keep it. Kind of planted that seed over the last couple of days. That's Notre Dame's game. We play great defense. Which way is the whistle going to blow predominantly? Well, if I'm the Irish, I'm selling that point to my kids. I mean, you're talking about a seven-time national champion who's sort of Phil Jacksoning it, right? Sort of drawing attention to the officials. I'm selling that to my kids. I'm like, hey, he thinks you're a threat. Diggins, the All-American, to put it in to Peters. Deborah Peters, the fiery two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year, tends to play at times a little bit overly emotional. Shot clock down to seven. Peters rolls in the quick give from another cell for two. They are a marvelous passing team. UConn seven and five in the national semifinals all time. Again, it's Dolson. She's getting all their points. Well, she's tearing up the two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, she's just making it look easy and a poor passing decision again by the Irish. Well, it's happened twice. Skate Lewis has it knocked away, but retrieves it here for Ferris. Here's Hartley open. Got it. A three-pointer. She's a marvelous shooter. Mosqueda Lewis, probably the best pure shooter. But Gino says he wants Bria Hartley to have the last shot if it comes down to that here tonight. So UConn surging into the lead. Hartley can't control it, loses it out of play, back over to the Irish. Well, there was a point at which Stephanie Dolson's confidence was completely shaken. It was the final regular season game in the loss to Notre Dame that Stephanie Dolson found herself, and no better time than in the postseason. Nicely done. The AA Women's Championship is presented by the Capital One Cup. Learn more and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. Final Four in Denver, first of our national semifinals. Connecticut with a two-point lead over Notre Dame. We go to Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca, how about the start by Stephanie Dolson? Eight points, four out of six. Well, Dave, UConn started to play better this season when Stephanie Dolson started to play better. Six-five anchor inside, and it's not just scoring. She sets the screen, able to get the step on a quicker Deborah Peters. The effort getting to the offensive glass. But much has to do with her screening. Her big body getting teammates open ultimately leads to Stephanie getting open. But you can't say it enough. This Connecticut team started playing better right before the Big East tournament. That's when Stephanie Dolson started playing better as well. And Connecticut coming with pressure because they want to trap and make Notre Dame as uncomfortable as possible. You like that mindset to attack the score, but you got to get good shots. Stokes just into the game, grabbing the rebound. Hartley pushing the tempo. Cody swinging up top here for Ferris. Dolson has really started well. She's had impressive first halves in the tournament. Outstanding scoring and passing like a point guard in that Elite Eight game against Kentucky. Well, she's a great facilitator, a willing and capable passer. And when you have a big player who can see the floor and survey against pressure, maybe few things more valuable. Under duress here, the shot clock. Yep, one to shoot it over the top. Not a good idea, and that's a shot clock. Almost a violation. Picked off there. So an errant pass on both sides. A little sketchy in the passing attack, but particularly and surprisingly, Notre Dame. Long one by Mallory won't fall. Achava couldn't rebound it. And here's Hartley on the dribble drive, a 14-footer. That won't drop. Notre Dame coming out of the pack with a rebound. And the four NCAA tournament victories, Notre Dame winning by an average of almost 30 a game. McBride with a miss. Comes out high for Doty. Skate to Lewis. 
And contact there and a foul at 13.52 to go in the first half. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Stephanie Dolson got off to that hot start, but not without a cost. Remember, these kids are playing at 5,190 feet in altitude. She came to the sideline just now, and she was gasping for air. She was struggling. She did seek some treatment from her athletic trainer, Rosemary. But, guys, I think she's just trying to get her breath, stay hydrated right now. But, boy, she was gasping for air. Coach Orama told us he expected that it would have its impact, and the way you have to manage that is one rest. Obviously, you take them out and you give them a breather. Sort of judicious use of your timeouts if necessary. If he felt like he had to have her on the floor, you might have to see him use a timeout. You see the disparity there, the altitude of the four schools here, Stanford, Baylor, UConn, and Notre Dame. Mallory committed the foul a moment ago, and that time the rim does help out Mosquito Lewis. Does it feel to you like the Irish are pressing and trying to run things too quickly? Yeah, no question. They are helter-skelter, and that's a traveling violation. That was on cue. One of the great players in the country. That's their third turnover. Skylar Diggins didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, Muppet McGraw's team, you can't win this basketball game in the first seven to eight minutes. You know, you are one of the better offensive teams in the country. You've got three dynamic guards off the dribble and McBride. Diggins and Novosel, and so much of it falls to Skyler. She is their verb, their energy, their decision maker. Became a big star during last year's NCAA tournament run out of the national championship game. Dolson is back in for the Huskies with eight points. Hayes a little bit wilder, and that one is tipped underneath and controlled by Notre Dame. Four turnovers now for the Huskies. UConn up by four. The only Irish losses this season came to Baylor, West Virginia, and Connecticut. Here's Hartley. Barris was actually at a very strong tournament. Nearly picked off. Mosqueda Lewis back outside. Now they want Dolson again in the lane for the hook. And the Irish playing their big lineup with the two posts. Diggins wants to get involved and backs in two. Yeah, and that's, she's very capable. I think that should help her teammates settle in. Her first bucket for the All-American and the Big East Player of the Year. He's coming off 22 against Kentucky. Played a great second half in what was a tight game. It was a two-point game at half. And that one knocked in for three-point land by Bria Hartley. We had the, the last regular season game where Connecticut looked to me to be a team that was shaken, one with zero confidence. And I asked Coach Oriama, how do you go from a team that looks like in the big moments you, you're not going to have it to one that looks now like this? And he said, you know what? I stopped being, frankly, a little bit of a jerk to my players. He said, I, I needed to back off them and stop reminding them of all the things we didn't do and tell them what they were good at. And it reminds me of something Diana Taurasi once told me. She said, from October 15th, through February 28th, he'll tell us we're the absolute worst team in America. And March 1st comes, and we believe we are the best team and an unbeatable team. And this team has a little different feel to it now. Well, he's talked about how they trust each other. They appear to trust each other more now than they have at any other point. Dolson was held up by Peters, and I think she had a contact lens knocked out. She can't believe there was no foul on the play. We'll talk about Gino when we return. Skylar Diggins, a little attack dribble right at Bria Hartley. One on one, ain't nothing doing, defense. Welcome back to Denver. Coach Ariema, Stephanie Dolson, very good early in this game. How can you continue to take advantage of her? Well, we're wearing her out right now. Um, we just need a little more movement to take some pressure off of her. We're, when we come down and just stare at Stephanie and try to force the ball in there, we're not as good. When we can generate some movement, we'll get her the ball anyway, but it's got to come through through our movement, not just staring at her. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Ali, thank you, and our thanks to Coach Rory Emmett. That's a big reason that Connecticut has the five-point lead at 18-13. It's Dolson. And through the years, UConn, the NCAA tournament by round, and look at what they've done in the final four. And a perfect 7-0 in national championship games. And you think about uh, one of the, the prime performers in the postseason, Elena Deladon, the transfer to Delaware. Uh, you know, she could have been in a Husky uniform. You wonder what that record might have been had she stayed. I think of Samari Walker at Kentucky as yeah, well. Sure. That's a very helpful factor, but Dolson doing great work early on. 
In the first of our two national semifinals, Notre Dame with only one basket in the last four minutes and ten seconds. So that Connecticut defense has buckled down as it has all season long. Interesting to me, there have only been three fouls called at this point in the game. No whistle, a little bump, no whistle there. Now, I thought that should have been a foul. I thought there was absolutely contact. That's a good offensive player drawing a foul there. Shot clock down to eight. Peters will drive it on Olsen. Nicely done. Yeah, and, and Peters, I'll tell you what, when she scores, if they can get the, the guards doing what they do, look out. I think they'd be very tough to beat. Peters is now three for four. That has six points. She averages 12 a game. Remember her in the national championship game last year against Texas A&M. In that loss for the Irish, she scored 21. Olsen a high post. And Machanga right out on top of her now. Hardly weaving her way in. Nice short jumper for two. And she loves that. That mid-range jump shot is something going in either direction that is very, very much a part of her offensive arsenal. So hardly with eight, she came into the game needing 13 to reach 1,000 career points. And at this base, she'll get it quickly here in the first half. Begins to run the offense now. The junior from South Bend. Lifelong dream to play for the Irish. Shot clock at five. Gives it up for Novacell. An excellent look and knocks down the three-pointer. That's a good sign. I mean, she's a capable three-point shooter, but her bread and butter is off the dribble drive, get to the rim, and one. But she's got that working. She's a very difficult check. Now she's also captain clutch for this Irish team. She's hit a lot of big shots. Weaving in Hayes for the bucket. Tiffany Hayes, the senior, in a fourth final four. You know, interesting, Dave, both coaches sort of said this game, because we are so familiar with one another, may come down to which team has players who can make more plays. Lovisell air mailing that one, but Peters picked it up, tried to bank, no. Achama went for the save, couldn't do it. Now, you talk about people who can make plays. Can you get yourself to the free throw line? Can you create your own opportunities? Well, you have exactly that in Tiffany Hayes. Just crosses over Natalie Novosel. Really nice adjustment in the air. And Hayes, it's been a little bit of a struggle on this stage. Look at those numbers in five Final Four games. Well, she played well against Notre Dame in the Big East Tournament Championship. 14 points, eight rebounds. It would certainly take something like that here tonight. Let's get a look at the excellent touch. Biggest freshman of the year. This is the biggest lead for Connecticut. Now you tell me, does it look like a team with a different feel than the one that lost at home to this Irish team in late February? Now, without a doubt, Machano trying to keep that foot planted has it knocked away. And again, no whistle. And a good no call there. Let's get a little off the fake inside the three and a little too strong. And Peters came from behind and a foul here with 9.02 to go in the first half. And that'll go against Connecticut. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship concludes on Tuesday night on ESPN with the championship game. Coverage beginning at 7.30 with the NCAA Women's Championship Special. Foul against Dolson was her first. Under nine to go in the first half of our first national semifinal. Novosel has to scramble to try and get it. Free ball. Hayes and a foul against McBride. So a great effort here by the Fighting Irish and Connecticut as they scramble for it. Well, one of the things Skylar Diggins talked about was 50-50 balls. It was Dolson who pressured at the elbow. And then look at the 6-5 center give up the body. And then watch the pursuit of the basketball. And that's just Hayes beating her to the spot. McBride's first. Tar Vanderveer, the legendary head coach at Stanford, doing some scouting. She has her hands full with undefeated Baylor later. Dolson straight on, too strong. Here's Mallory out of the pack with it. The pull-up pop banks it in. Outstanding. And that's just very good decision-making by Brittany Mallory. Well, Muffin McGraw paid her a great compliment. She said, no matter how bad a week of practice is, how awful everything's going, I look at Mallory with a big smile on her face usually, and I know everything's going to be okay. A whistle and will go the other way, even though she's tremendously tough and gritty. Well, there's certain players who understand your system and know exactly what you want, and that's Brittany Mallory. Now, you're talking about a highly experienced 
a Notre Dame guard who understands both the offense and the defense. You know what you love about her, Dave? She's willing to subjugate her offensive game to absorb the hardest matchup on the defensive end and never say a word about the number of shots she doesn't get to take. Connecticut foul against Stokes, her first. Under eight, the opening half, Diggins with it. Rhea Hartley guarding her. Novacell, first team all Big East. On the drive, right into Dolson, held her ground, knocked it away, but it's free again. Novacell banks it up and in for two. She lost her headband in the process. But she has 10. That's nasty. That's a nickname. That's just persistence playing through contact. Good block by Dolson on the first, but beat persistent. Notre Dame cuts it to two. Barris looking for someone. Stokes wants to drive it. Got bottled up underneath, but stays with it for two points. Now Gino Oriana loves the effort on that play because he's been after all year to play just like that because she has all the skill in the world. Yeah, we, we frankly expected this. I mean, that's a poor decision by Peters. But we expected this, you know, just knock down, drag out, eighth time in two years, a little bit of distaste, who cares? Play, ladies. Good block by Stephanie Dolce, a little trap on the baseline. Nasty Novacell, I'll take it and deliver. NCAA Women's Final Four here in Denver. There's your score with 6.54 to go in the first half. Connecticut on top of Notre Dame by Fort Doris. Take us inside the play. Well, one of the things, we, we talked about Stephanie Dolson as a scorer and as a passer. This is something she does exceptionally well. Now, some of her opponents will say she sets illegal screens. I think this is just a little case in point where she slips a screen, okay? She's looking like it's going to be a pick and roll, and she simply dives to the rim. But that shows you the respect her opponents have for her screening ability because they're sort of looking around, scrambling at it. Man, they are illegally hard. Yes. We have seen players fly left and right all through the tournament when Dolson has set a screen. They don't want to make contact with her. She is rugged. Has it on the bounce. Off to Caroline Doty. Back to Dolson. They run this play very, very well. And Dolson's had a terrific first half with 10. 622 to go in the half. McBride bottled up by Dolson. Ferris came over and knocked it away. Great double team by the Huskies. And the trademark defense is showing off. Here's Hayes. Got a great look. Won't drop from three. And it'll stay Irish ball. Well, you want to talk about a player impacting in just about every phase as Skylar Diggins comes back into the basketball game. So on the drive, look at this. We talked about the team defense. And, and one thing here, and, and I think you made note of this, Coach Oriam has sort of been, you know, talking about this in the media. I think if you're the Irish, you're feeling like you're getting an unfriendly in the first half, a lack of a whistle. Peters turning toward the hoop. A wild shot. Comes out high, tipped. That'll stay on this end. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, Stephanie Dolson has been an unbelievable player in this postseason, but her turnaround came during a Marquette game where she played just six minutes. She sat on the bench, and Coach Ariema sat two seats away and just ripped her in her hearing. He said, I am so sick of us working so hard to make our post better and them not caring. I'm going to play five guards from here, even if we lose. I'm not going to continue to put up from this. She started crying on the bench. She said it was hard to hear, but it changed me. She's changed her game, guys. Her numbers have turned around. She's almost scoring double and rebounding better, and you can see it tonight. She passes out of pressure. Hartley up top off the back of the iron, but they'll get another chance at it. It was a marvelous move by Peters moments ago to bank one in. Well, thank goodness for Devereaux Peters scoring the basketball because the Irish would be in trouble. Skylar Diggins early in this tournament did not need to assert herself. She had a triple-double in the regional final and left no doubt in Maryland's mind that they were not walking on their way to Denver. Skylar Diggins, the point guard of the year and a first-team All-American, needs to make her presence felt. McBride fires it up. Too strong, rebounded by Dolson. She has five to go along with ten points in the first half. I'd be really interested to hear Muffet McGraw's uh, evaluation of her team's shot selection in the first half. Shot selection was something she spoke to us to, uh, about at the shoot-around today. Well, they're only hitting 
under 29% from three, although that's not a big part of their attack. Shot clock down to six now for Connecticut. Dolson, another touch inside, up and in for two. She has a dozen. She is tearing it up. And I wonder if Natalie Achanwa is a little bit tired. The Irish look all kinds of out of sorts, and yet they only trail by six. Well, it's a very composed team. Peters is a graduate. Diggins a junior. Novacell a senior. Mallory has graduated. All sorts of experience. They have the shot clock inside 10 now. Diggins takes a look. Now down to three. They've got to get a shot in the air. McBride heaves it. Not the shot they wanted. Big rebound there by Peters. She's fouled underneath with 3.49 to play in the opening half. So Deborah Peters still working very, very hard. Now a confident Stephanie Dolson makes all the difference in the world because Dave, she gets you something that you need to beat good teams, and that's easy shot opportunities, paint points. I am Skylar Diggins, Notre Dame. I am a Twitter junkie. Follow me. Tweet. Please tweet. Dang, can I have my moment? I am going to smack my teammates. I don't know what I am with this. I'm smooth. The Irish could really use a Skylar Diggins moment the way things are going right now. This season, you see her scoring way up against Connecticut, relatively speaking, but her shooting down. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're talking about uh, the nation's toughest defense in terms of giving up tough twos. And one of the things, I was watching the, the Big East Championship game this morning, and I couldn't believe how uncomfortable the Irish looked all game. They, they're, to me, the best offensive team remaining. That's Skylar Diggins' mom. But they never found room or rhythm against Connecticut in that Big East Championship game. And I would say they're having trouble finding room and rhythm tonight. Right before the break, Kelly Ferris committed her second foul. Skyler with just two points and two assists so far. Peters in and out with that effort. Novosel's there for the rebound. So Connecticut leading by six. Mallory trying to get inside. Stokes knocks it away. She's played some important minutes here early. And a totally different uh, dynamic in there. She's a little bit more athletic. She's got great length, a great frame. It's just a matter of time for Pia Stokes to bust out and be a star. Novosel wants the ball. Again, Stokes there to defend, but a foul with 3.36 on the clock. And tomorrow night, Kentucky and Kansas square off in the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Coverage on CBS begins at 9 o'clock Eastern. For more information, log on to NCAA.com. So the foul on Stokes is her second. Oversell's too strong. An excellent foul shooter at 84%. So there's signs that something's a little off for the Irish above the scoreboard. And, and this is playing very similar to that Big East Championship game where they looked out of sorts in the first half. They were a catch. They were only trailing by one. Uh, but her team, Muppets team, just never sort of got that rhythm. Dolson back in. Novacell makes that one. You've got three of the top seven scoring teams in the country. And the Irish is the best of those three at points per game. Well, still to come, Baylor undefeated at 38-0, taking on Stanford, the number one and number two ranked teams in America to battle on this floor. Back to our cut, must get it for two. And who made the pass? What a half by Stephanie Dolson. It's not just the scoring and the rebound. She's got a couple blocks. Uh, that pass yeah, in the back door cut, that's just so smart. Stephanie Dolson is having the half of her life in the final four. Diggins gets the roll. That's one of the rare times you may see that with these new rims in this final four. Hayes driving. It really opened up for her, but she can't knock it down. Maybe going a little too strong, the senior. So a five-point game. Peters at the line. Diggins will lock it up and knock it down to two. Yeah, but, you know, she's capable. She can go for six or eight in a row, and that will buoy the confidence of the players around her. So Skyler with six.
Now, Skater Lewis trying to draw a little bit of contact. That's going to be a traveling violation on her. So she gives it up. Yeah, and just a little impatience there. Desperately wanted to score. How about this from the high angle? This is what I was talking about. That's six foot five, not under duress of Devereaux Peters. And instead, she's got vision and the space to make the pass. She's playing with a big time bounce as well. Dolson. Diggins trying to make a move. Batted away twice by Hartley, but she wins it back. Diggins wants to shoot. Maybe force that shot a little bit, and it's Doty with the rebound. Caroline Doty making her way back into the starting rotation this year after three torn ACLs. And it'll go the other way. There you go. Because that's something Stephanie Tolson does, no question, is she'll lean just a bit on screens. So the foul, number two on Stephanie Dolson. And Notre Dame with an opportunity, despite some herky-jerky play, some choppy play in the first half, to tie this with a minute 51 to go before the break. And we expected it. I mean, they're not going to go away. The Irish, there's no sense of intimidation. Uh, Skyler Diggins said, listen, we're not intimidated. Dolson goes to the bench with the two personals. We'll see how that changes things here down the stretch of the opening half. Peters, quick bounce. So John Moy, yes, she delivers. Outstanding. Screen and roll. You don't get the initial action. Peters has been very good. Makes herself a target, and she also is a good passing post player. So one point game. The back door again. Ferris, yes. Quick strike by UConn. Kelly Ferris, who has really played a starring role in Connecticut's tournament run to this point, especially in the Sweet 16. She had 15 points, seven rebounds. Tough drive, Novosel cannot complete that in a tie-up. Possession I will keep it on this end with a minute and one to go before halftime. Notre Dame ball. So Diggins to put it in. She won the Big East assist crown. She also led the conference in steals and averaging 17 a game. Over the top intended for Peters, batted away by Connecticut. Hartley wants to run. Full head of steam on the drive. Yes. And a timeout. Muffin McGraw and Notre Dame with 52.7 to go. Well, the driving, if you had a non-call on a Nova Cell drive, you get out and transition if you're Hartley. A little bit of contact here, but no whistle. But it was none on one end, none on the other. She just completes the play that Nova Cell did not complete. Well, coming up on the Home Depot halftime report, Tara Vanderveer live on the set. The great Stanford head coach preparing for a showdown with Brittany Griner and Baylor. And a breakdown of the first half. That's just 52.7 seconds away. Pretty much what we expected. Two conference opponents who are intimately familiar with one another. Uh, playing hard. We expected this to go down to the wire. In that second game, Baylor goes in undefeated. The eighth undefeated team to enter the Final Four. Only Louisiana Tech in 1990 failed to win the title. And that's going to go the other way. An offensive foul with 46.5 seconds to go. But you're coming from such a long way. See, I think that's a bad call. And this is why uh, we're talking to some local reporters in Connecticut. Block charge call would be important today. And frankly, I thought that was a block. And so now Skylar Diggins has got to go sit. With 40 seconds left in the half, she has to go to the bench. 19 on the shot clock for Ferris. Hayes brings it out now for the Huskies with a five-point lead over Notre Dame. Hartley, a move into the lane, the hanger. That missed badly. So Notre Dame with plenty of time to get a shot off before halftime. Now Chandwa decided not to drive it. Now it's down to seven. Remember, Diggins is on the bench. McBride. Bodied up by Doty. Got it up and in before the buzzer. How did she get that shot off? 
Tremendous defense by Doty, who's playing on a broken down knee to stay in front. That's just a better individual play by Kayla McBride. And the Irish needed that lift, didn't they? I'll tell you what, you, you do all that you want as a defender. Look at her staying in front, making a tough shot, but McBride delivers. Let's go to Holly Rowe with Skyler. Well, Skyler, it seems at times your offense has been searching for a rhythm. What do you have to do to get a little bit more of it? We gotta cut hard. They are playing us right now. We gotta hustle up. You know, we're not sprinting to our cuts. We're not sprinting to our screens. We gotta do a better job executing. How do you need to change defensively? We'll get in here. We'll make adjustments at halftime. We'll figure out what we have to do. But it's basically just getting out hustled and not playing team defense. Thank you, Skyler. Now let's go to Rebecca Lobo. Stephanie, a terrific first half for you personally. How have you been so effective in the first 20 minutes? Um, I think I'm just doing a good job of screening for my guards, and then uh, Notre Dame is doing, you know, they're really pressuring us, so I'm just keep slipping to the basket and getting wide open layups. What kind of an impact, if any, will two fouls have on the way you play in the second half? Um, I don't think I'll have any impact. I'm just got to keep going strong to the basket. Uh, just got to stay down on my screens and not move, and just stay aggressive. All right, Stephanie, thank you. Dave? Thanks, Rebecca. It must be nice for Rebecca to look someone in the eye. <laughs> Connecticut 36-33 over Notre Dame at halftime. And now let's join Trey Wingo for the Home Depot Halftime Report. Trey? All right, Dave O'Brien, thanks very much. Halfway home for the first national semifinal, and it is indeed time for the Home Depot Halftime Report. Trey Wingo here with Carol Lawson and the coach, Carolyn Peck. A three-point lead for UConn. Notre Dame Carey got off to a great start in this contest. UConn at one point had the lead up to six. How has Notre Dame responded to what they're seeing defensively from Gino Auriemma's crew? I think that's really at the crux of how this game has played out is Notre Dame's been disrupted on the offensive end. How have they been disrupted? It's really been by the UConn pressure, putting the basketball in other, in other players' hands. And, you know, Brittany Mallory, as a player handling pressure here, and this happened early in the game, and we saw the game plan for UConn. They're going to attack and make Notre Dame try to play faster than they practice, and this was an excellent job by Notre Dame to break pressure and get a three-point shot, but UConn was relentless. They stayed with it. They continued to put the pressure on whoever the ball handler was, and Muffin McGraw went to a two-post offense, so she only had three ball handlers on the floor, and they were successful at disrupting the Irish on the offensive end. Never felt like Notre Dame got into that rhythm, and so I think for Notre Dame, they have to feel good that they're only down three, but they've got to find a way to feel better on the offensive end. We talked about Notre Dame going to that two-post offense. Well, they had to get two posts on the floor because Stephanie Dolson was the workhorse inside for Connecticut. But it wasn't just their scoring. She was the mad screener. Holly Rowe and Rebecca Lobo both recruited, reported on this, but you look at how many screens she sets within an offense. It may be to screen for herself, get the screen and roll, and attack in the basket. But Stephanie Dolson is doing a good job on what the Connecticut offense is centered around, and that's the post players screening and getting the guards open. Stephanie Dolson has two fouls now. Kia Stokes got called for a moving screen, and I think the officials have to keep an eye on that. Well, we'll keep an eye on this game. It's a three-point game, and if you're UConn, you're saying, hey, we have the lead. If you're Notre Dame, you say to your crew, UConn shot 55% in the first half, and we're only down three. Second half coming up a little later. After that, it'll be Baylor, number one overall seed, taking on Stanford. Tara Vanderbilt will join us to talk about what the Cardinal need to do if they're going to give Baylor University their first loss of the season. That's ahead. Stay with us here on the Home Depot Halftime Report. Welcome to the Home Depot Halftime Report. Welcome back to the Home Depot Halftime Report. Well, it is a three-point UConn lead at the break in our first national semifinal. Notre Dame hoping to cheer their squad on to a better second half. Welcome back to the Home Depot Halftime Report, and we are delighted to be joined at half by the head coach of the Stanford Cardinal, Tara Vanderveer. Tara, you have the game coming up after this game against Baylor University. What is it going to take? for the Cardinal to be the one team this season to hand Baylor their first loss. Well, Trey, I hope people will stay and watch. Um, oh, I think they play, will. We have to play great defense. Uh, we're going to have to score against um, Brittany, but not go at her, I think, underneath. Uh, she, she blocks too many shots. But I have a lot of confidence in Neko Gumake, Chene Gumake, Jocelyn Tingo, Amber Ron, Tony Kokanis. I, I think our bench is going to be huge. But listen, your strength is what Neck and Chene can do in the post. Obviously, Baylor's strength is what Brittany can do offensively and defensively in the right. post. If those two factors sort of cancel each other out, 
What's the key then for you to come away with a win? I think we're going to have to hit some perimeter shots. We've got to make some threes. Uh, we're going to get out in transition before Brittany gets down there. And in this first game, I really noticed some, maybe some altitude bothering some people. So hopefully our bench will come in and really help us. Sarah Booth can do a great job for us. Lindy LaRock. Coach. Neca, I mean, has had a sensational season for you guys as a senior. What has she brought this year that's been different in her first three seasons? You know, uh, her leadership, her poise. She's so confident. Uh, she's just playing really, really well. Her versatility is much more than it used to be. Coach, the teams that are playing right now have both faced Brittany Griner previously this season. Is that an advantage or disadvantage for you? And if so, which one? You know, um, it, is, it is what it is. So I think it's an advantage for us having not played against her. Um, and so we haven't we haven't schemed against her, but she hasn't played against us either. She hasn't played against Neck and Chene. Um, we're so excited to be here. Our team is so proud to represent the Pac-12. Uh, we're we're going to play a great game, and we know Baylor's a great team. Uh, we just want to be the spoiler. Uh, well, you're here like UConn for the fifth straight year, but unlike UConn, there hasn't been that taste of a championship during mm -hmm. that five-year run. What have you said and what are you saying to your players that can get across the message that this year it can be different? Well, you know, I think that our team really does believe there is a confidence, and that starts with NECA. She's excited to play against uh, Brittany and Baylor. Um, you know, our whole staff, we've worked really hard. Uh, we've played well. We've improved a lot. Uh, we have a breakdown guard that's different than we've had before. Amber breaks people down off the dribble. Tony quicker. Um, we're shooting the three ball really well. So, you know, it's, it's just so exciting to be here. We don't dwell on the past. Uh, we're just excited to be here, and we want to play really well tonight. Well, it has been a fantastic run for Stanford and everybody else. All four number one seeds here in the final four for the first time since 1989, only the second time in tournament play. Tara, as always, thanks for being with us, and good luck in the second game. Thank you, Trey and Karen and Carolyn. Tara Vandeveer, head coach of the Stanford Cardinal. That's the second game coming up. Meanwhile, Natalie Novosel has 11 for Notre Dame, but it's UConn by three at the break. This halftime report is built by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. It is UConn by three, thanks in a large part to the presence of Stephanie Dolson. 12 first half points, assists, screens, you name it, she's doing it all. Stephanie Dolson knows who she is on and off the court. I am Stephanie Dolson, a Connecticut Husky. I am emotional, a Gleek, a model, a role model. I am a girly girl. <laughs> this halftime report is built by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One and from Denver, Colorado. We're ready for the second half. Connecticut leading Notre Dame 36 33. Dave O'Brien and Doris Burke with you ready for the second 20 minutes. And Doris, UConn shot 55% in the first half. Dolson was outstanding 12 points and five rebounds. She averages 10 and 6. Field goal percentage is usually a direct reflection of the kinds of shots you've taken. And obviously, Connecticut was outstanding getting good shots. Stephanie Dolson, a big part of what happened there in that first half. A little. Uh, Miscue there by Kelly Ferris. Stephanie Dolson playing through fatigue in that particular instance. And then how about this nice little backdoor facilitation on the very good cut by Kalena Mosqueda Lewis in the hot zone. Look at that. A combined 13 for 20 from inside the painted area. Look at that relative to the number of shots outside the hot zone. Love it. And a low number of whistles here in the first half. Let's go to Holly Roll. Well, I spoke with Notre Dame coach Muffet McGraw. How do they guard Stephanie Dolson better? And she said, well, we need to start guarding her. Too many of those looks were wide open. I think that's a problem all over defensively. We have not defended enough. Their 55% shooting by UConn is the best shooting in the half as Connecticut has had 
against Notre Dame in seven halves this season. She also said we've got to get a better job handling the pressure. They're disrupting our offense. We've got to handle that better. Barris with a misfire as Connecticut opens up with a basketball in the second half. And here comes Diggins, who tends to go from a poor half to an electrifying second half. Peters battling inside, and there's a whistle. She'll go to the line to shoot a pair. A 68% foul shooter, Devereaux Peters. Dolson, I think, just picked up her third. Indeed, she did. Number three on Stephanie Dolson. So a major development that Gina Oriema is not pleased with. Well, now do you come with Kia Stokes? That'll be an interesting thing. Peters with the first. We had a case in Kingston where she got into a little bit of foul trouble and coach Oriama trusted her to play through that and she did exactly that. But you are talking about a player who now has got to be very, very smart about the screens she sets on the offensive end and the kinds of plays she's trying to make defensively. And if you're the Irish, I would make sure my drives uh, are on her side of the floor. A one point game, Peters pressuring the ball. Dolson at midcourt. Doty driving the baseline. Hayes, traffic, a lot of contact, no foul. And now a two on one. Mallory off for Diggins and gets two. And she wanted a foul. How good is that? Brittany Mallory just outstanding handle in the two on one situation. Just would not deliver the basketball until the defender committed. Is there any doubt that McBride's basket right before the buzzer of the first half has helped them here in the second? Uh, you know what? I think every basket. This is coming down the wire. I'd be shocked if it's anything less than a last possession game. Doty measures up, fires. That's not there. Dolson tips it to herself and stayed away from a foul. That could have been awfully close. Hayes on the drive, and she's hit by Peters and goes down. That'll be two shots for Hayes. Well, you've got a national champion point guard on the sideline if you're the Irish, and that's Niel Ivey. As you see, Brittany Mallory, how about that delivery? Perfect handle of the two-on-one, but look at the, the point guard to the tutor. Look at this. Getting a talking to from a national champion in 2001, Niel Ivey. Hayes at the line. We have seen those two three, four, five hours before a game at Notre Dame, working out on shots, three-point shooting from the floor. Let's go to Holly. Well, that relationship started when Skylar Diggins was a very young girl. She was a little girl, 10 years old, and watched that parade go by for the 01 National Championship team. Then the LIV came on staff at Notre Dame. Her only job was to recruit Skylar Diggins. Since then, they have established a very close relationship. And Dave, as you said, countless hours of film. They ride together on the bus over here, and that National Championship point guard has brought Skylar Diggins along. Blocking foul here against Connecticut. Early moments of the second half, 18-24 to go. Farris with her third. So the second Connecticut starter now in foul trouble. And there's not great depth on UCAN's side of the, the equation. So this is an important developing story as you see those three. You're talking about the best defender in Farris on the perimeter. And Stephanie Dolson is the most important post player. And there you go. Ferris will go out. Mosqueda Lewis comes in. And just to make a point about Skylar Diggins, there's a reason she won the National Point Guard Player of the Year. You talked about her work ethic. She spent a ton of time in the film room with Neil Ivey. And if you're a point guard, there's nothing more important to do than get in the film room with a coach because the game slows down for you on tape, Dave. Well, such a charismatic player and a money player for Notre Dame. The Irish leading by two. They were down at half here in this national semifinal. Still to come, Stanford against undefeated Baylor. But Stanford's only lost once all year. Those two teams are 73 and one. Mosqueda Lewis right off the bench and right into the scoring column. Well, I just uh, uh, honestly, as, as pretty a shooter as there is in the country, is Mosqueda Lewis. Step back and cry. That's too strong. I mean, Lewis are really crashing that glass. Well, you've got two teams that play a lot of four guard, uh, four guard lineups, so their ability to rebound is important. Nova sells triple too strong, but it comes out high for Mallory. As you often see, those three pointers come out really deep. And this is Connecticut's zone. They call it a point zone. He just whips the pass. They can't strike in close, and the foul. 
It's four and on that Dolson. Is going to be four on Stephanie Dolson as she went for the block on McBride. And she's going to have to exit this game right now for a long stretch. This is why I said the kinds of plays she tries to make defensively are important. You're in bad position. That is an immature play by a player you don't expect it from. And that's really frustrating if you're a coaching staff. So Dolson who had that sensational first half. Out she comes. Well, she's going to try to plead her case. I'm not sure why they're shocked. And Coach Oriyama addressed this with us the other day. He said, great players never act surprised when they foul. That's an obvious foul. I'm not sure why that reaction. McBride, an excellent foul shooter, 86%. Number one in the Big East, in fact. And now more pressure from the Irish. Hayes has been very quiet. The senior who's outstanding in the Elite Eight. But she's been... Got a disappearing act so far in this final four. Hardly on Mallory. Stokes there to set the screen. Hayes with a shot clock down to three. Try to get free. There's a clean play by Diggins. She knocks it away. She got the block. Novosel. McBride slicing in for two. You're going to get the timeout. You need one, absolutely. The Irish starting to feel good about themselves. Now the roles are reversed. A little pressure from the Notre Dame Irish. They're seeing that veteran presence by Notre Dame in the clutch of the second half. Seven point flip for the Fighting Irish. They were down at half by three, leading by four here in the early moments of the second half. Let's go to Rebecca. Well, Dave, in the Big East Championship game, Connecticut did a great job defensively taking away the elbow pass for Notre Dame. So the adjustment Notre Dame made in the first half, only once did they try to make that elbow pass. Everything has been drag screens and screens on the ball, trying to involve the bigs in the screens and taking it at the basket. But of course, here in the second half, the answer for Notre Dame offensively has been getting out in transition. Well, I mean, it's a great point. And, and, and Rebecca, all of a sudden, Natalie Novoselle, who, who Muffet McGraw told us earlier today, had to score. She got 13 points, four assists. She's been to the free throw line six times. How about this? Six total free throws in the first 20 for the Irish. Six already here in the second half. Well, it took Notre Dame a little while to warm up. But guess what? They have warmed up with 16 and a half to go in this national semifinal. Well, and this is where I think you need, need Hayes. You, you said it. She's got to assert herself. Here she is with a jump shot. Partially tipped by Diggins, who's really active defensively. Let's go to Holly. You guys are absolutely right. The last time out, the first thing Gino Ariema said in the huddle was to rip his senior, Tiffany Hayes. He screamed at her. You're our senior. Why are you giving up on yourself? We need you. She's just got five points. The other point he made, too much dribbling. Quit dribbling. Attack the rim, just like Hartley did. Yes, she does. Bria Hartley with the bucket. In a two-point game, here's Diggins quickly to the other end, hits the deck, and on her back, she got the rebound. Now batted away by Hartley, and there's the whistle with 16.04 left. Uh, I can tell you on a couple of occasions, Diggins has been pleading with the officials for a foul on one occasion after she had made a basket. Yeah, and, and this is a great drive, and normally one where she gets to the rim. And see, I think that's a foul. Notre Dame by two, but you call the ball, Hartley again attacking, and she'll go to the line as she draws the foul. I'll tell you what, Hartley has hurt her coach. Yeah, she is the most fearless in the blue jerseys. We expected that this would be a dogfight. Conference opponents, Big East, eight times in the last two years. Both teams being physical, giving up their bodies. Lots on the line, a national championship birth game. two superstars and two great programs to clash in the final four coming up game two Brittany Griner an undefeated Baylor at 38 no the national player of the year who has had a great tournament but so has Neka Ogumake well you've got strength on strength at the post position Neka Ogumake an outstanding athlete this is the most dominant factor in women's basketball on both ends 
one point here. You know, if Stanford were lucky enough to get Brittany Griner in foul trouble in the next game, they'd have to make a huge push and build an advantage. Right now, the Irish need to build an advantage. They're just plus two, and Stephanie Dolson has to sit a while. And as long as you're, you know, attached, there's no reason for Coach Orion to come back with her. So Dolson on the bench with four. Hartley at the line for a second shot, fouled by Peters before the break. Peters picked up her second. And Hartley makes one of two. The UConn upping the pressure. Kara Lawson talked about the disruption of the UConn defense. They want to continue that theme here. And Chandler ready to come back on. Good size at 6-3 from up in McGraw. Novacell working on a 13-point game. Diggins now. Peters handing off. Inside 10 now on the shot clock. Diggins fires it up. The lefty hits it. Good patience enough. You, know, you can handle pressure. UConn does a tremendous job keeping themselves between the dribble driver and the basket. But be patient. Get to your second, third, and fourth options if necessary. Very interesting that three of the four point guards in the final four are left-handers. Yeah, interesting. Like fighting a southpaw, so to speak, right? A little bit unorthodox. Here's Hayes. Had to adjust his shot. That won't drop. Diggins went for the save but could not do it. Seven on the shot clock. Well, Thursday at 4.30 Eastern, the Frozen Four underway. Tampa, Union, and Ferris State squaring off the first national semifinal matchup on ESPNU, ESPN3, and streaming live on WatchESPN.com. So Hayes to put it in again, just seven seconds to shoot for the Huskies. Stokes looking for a shooter. Bouncing underneath Mosqueda Lewis. Oh, right there to the end of the shot clock. Yeah, and that's something that's developed late in UConn's season. I think Coach Aram was looking to get Mosqueda Lewis more involved offensively. So he started running post up sets for her. Why not with that frame? And she had 19 against Notre Dame in the Big East Tournament Championship game. She goes down on the drive, Nova Self, flips it up wildly. It bats around right at the foul line. Here comes Hartley. On the drive, the bounce, Stokes trying to finish it, but it's going to go the other way. No basket, an offensive foul. Notre Dame by one. Tremendous play. I mean, just end-to-end -end action. You're coming from a long way. So look at Skylar Diggins. Get in position. Protect herself by crossing her arms in front of her body. And Hartley with the offensive. McBride, who had the bucket at the buzzer. Tied up. Possession arrow will keep it on this end of the floor. It'll be Notre Dame ball. Remember what Holly said about too much dribbling? That's a case in point. And on the, the possession where Notre Dame last scored, something Rebecca touched on often was, was the Irish ability to get it to the elbow and how effective they are. That's a, That was a case in point. They got their last bucket because they entered it to the elbow and worked off it. Nova Shell in the paint. Blocked by Stokes, but another whistle. And going to be a foul on the play, an offensive against Novacell, her first. Well, you've got players willing to give up the body. It, it's a tough angle for us to see. So I'm not going to evaluate. The, these officials, I'm going to be honest with you, I think this is a difficult game to officiate. You've got hard drivers. I think the angle at which you see the call is important. And I think for the most part, you know, I don't think either team could complain. I'm not saying that they might not gripe about an individual call, but I don't think either team could say, okay, one is a, a huge disparity here. And generally, the lack of whistles is very refreshing, and it allows the tempo and the pace of the game to proceed. Mosqueda Lewis, great pass. Stokes has it knocked away, though. It's stolen by the Irish. Oversell directing the offense to Mallory. Off the fake. Bounce inside. Ochanwa for two. Well, that's their game. Yeah, when, they, when they're when they patient and they don't let the pressure hurry them and they don't allow Connecticut to speed them up, they can execute. Again, Notre Dame was down three at halftime. But Mallory and company have gotten them on top here, 47 to 44. Over the top intended for Stokes, knocked away by Notre Dame with eight on the shot clock. You've got a very skilled Notre Dame team. Novacell pushes the pace, a simple up fake, and that's early offense. That's just being patient, selling it with a shot fake, early offense opportunities. Don't let that 
tough UConn D dig in, Dave. They're too hard to score against in a half court. Novosel picked up her second foul on that play. Irish get it. Here comes Diggins. Quick on quick. And the reach in foul by Tiffany Hayes, her first. Trying to stop that fast break by Skylar Diggins. This is going to be fascinating to me because if, if the Irish get to five points or seven points, uh, say before the under eight timeout, does Coach Oriama come back with Stephanie Dolson? And maybe does he sort of put her in and out around the timeouts? Benched with four. Notre Dame 10 out of 13 at the line. Very good foul shooting team. They both are. Notre Dame 76%. So Diggins ups it to 49-44. And I like this. I like the Irish reversing things. You know, it was Connecticut who was extending their pressure. The Irish, I think, put that on. Let's, let's be the aggressor. Let's come after them. Hardly wanted to shoot. Back of the way by Mallory. It's loose. Mosqueda Lewis picks it up. Underneath. And the whistle. She'll go to the line as well. Elena Mosqueda Lewis, a freshman, certainly doesn't play like one. No, I, I love her demeanor. She plays with such great confidence and poise. And tell you what, look at this. Just gets batted away, able to take the contact. Just look at that frame. I mean, she's a freshman and she's got a pro body. Machano with the first. Mosqueda Lewis, 83% at the line. Three point play, two point game. Up ahead of John, will they break it? Nova Cell always going to the hole, but knocked away by Mosqueda Lewis. Tremendous defensive play by the freshman, but Hayes is out of control and simply lost it back over to the Irish. Now, we saw Hayes have a couple of tough minutes in the second half against Kentucky, and then she delivered in a big way. Confidence is a funny thing. She's got to feel like she can make the necessary plays, the senior plays a UConn player typically makes. UConn with their only senior. Peters kicks for Mallory. Here's a three. Stokes with a rebound. How about Stokes giving him some good minutes? Another freshman. On the run, Ferris attacking and a quick strike for UConn. And the Huskies have tied it at 49 in tonight's national semifinal game one. We'll see if Diggins has an answer. A 14 footer, no. Achanwa follows, and she's played extremely well. I'll tell you what, outstanding. And all of these players, to me, have to play through fatigue. You see them sometimes come up the floor slowly. Well, the altitude, Hartley splits two defenders. That won't drop for her. And now a tie-up as Achanwa brought it down. Possession arrow for UConn, so they win it on the arrow. When we come back, Holly will talk to Muffin McGraw, the Notre Dame head coach here in Denver. Welcome back to Denver with Notre Dame head coach Muffet McGraw. And at halftime, you didn't like the hustle and how hard your team was playing, but how has that changed? I think we're playing much better defensively now. You just had some words with Natalie. She's had a good second half, but what else did you want to see? We need to be her? strong with the ball. They're taking it right out of her hands. We need to rebound much better. Thanks, coach. Thanks, Holly. That's exactly what happened on that last possession. We recapped the three previous meetings this season. Remember, this is the fourth time they've met. One of them went overtime. Well, you think about that January 7th game. Connecticut had the lead in the ball down late. They failed to execute, go on to lose it in overtime. Uh, did not look confident in the February 27th game, but that was the turning point for this team. Coach Oriama said he backed off completely, stopped being in his words. I'll use uh, being tough on them. He used another word to describe himself, which I won't put on the air. But how much, how much are those coaches enjoying those interviews we're doing with them? <laughs> Coach Oriama in the first Not even a little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what a big moment it is in the life of the 6'3 freshman Kia Stokes for UConn. Former Iowa Gatorade High School Player of the Year. She hasn't played more than 18 minutes in a tournament game. She's going to top that very likely in this game with Dolson out. Dolson's been out the last five and a half minutes now. The score was tied when she picked up her fourth. And you're just buying time. You're just buying time and give Kia Stokes some credit. You know, you have to be ready to play. And Coach Oriama, boy, this will earn you some minutes. 
give Chris Daly some time with that young woman. She's going to be terrific. Muscada Lewis pops it up. No rebound batted free into the corner. Muscada Lewis giving chase. She saved it back over to Notre Dame. And they have numbers at three on one. Nova Cell draws the foul by Hayes. She'll be shooting two. And she'll be shooting free throws number seven and eight. And this is her specialty. I like the way Natalie Novosel approaches drives to the rim. She can be a bit reckless, but she's going to challenge you and she's going to get herself here. She can be a big game kind of scorer against Baylor. She dropped 28 on Lady Bears. We will see later tonight against Stanford in game two. Free throw shooting against Connecticut has been a big story so far this season. A striking disparity. Obviously, the, the, the biggest number on there is in their loss. They did not go very often. McBride off the feed. Can't get it. Muscada Lewis with the rebound. Great checkout by Kelly Ferris on Natalie Achamo. She's given up all kinds of size, but the Hoosier delivers. Hardly looking to fire a three. High rebound for Hayes and a new shot clock for the Huskies. Two of their four losses this season came to the Fighting Irish. It was Notre Dame that knocked Connecticut out of the tournament last year in the Final Four. Barris down low, Stokes intended for her, and they take it away. Well, impatience and no spacing. I, I thought Kalina had great post position. Peters, tough angle underneath off a nifty feed from Diggins. 54 49. Terrific pace, and that's where Skylar Diggins has vastly improved. Coach Joy, I'm going to use a timeout here. With 10.09 to go in the second half. Look at the points off turnovers going up for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, and this is something that's been a weakness of Connecticut against this particular team. Skylar Diggins, we saw Neil Ivy talking to her, that high screen, and then the soft pass right over the, the defense. I'll tell you what, her, her basketball IQ, tremendous. 16 Connecticut turnovers for well, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship will conclude Tuesday night at ESPN with the championship game. The winner of this one taking on the winner of Stanford and Baylor, all number ones for just the second time in the history of the tournament, making it through to the Final Four. And at 8.30 Eastern, the winner of this one taking on the winner of Stanford Baylor, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by Capital One. Stephanie Dolson now back into the basketball game. Four fouls on her. You've got the double post set for the Irish with Achanwa and Peters on the floor and the double post set by UConn. Stokes and Dolson. She was in a terrific rhythm in the first half. 12 points, five rebounds, a major part of the offense. You wonder how the long sit is going to affect her. She has it up top. Skater Lewis, a leaner in heavy traffic, it rims out. It'll stay on this end, however. Tipped out by Notre Dame with 9.50 to go. Hayes looking for someone, it's Dolson. Rolling into the lane, to her right. Yes! Wow, I guess she answered that quickly. Tough shot, I'll tell you. Just great use of the dribble. Boy, that left hand, boy, she wrapped it around that defender, too, on that move. So the Irish with a three-point lead and the ball. McBride can't get that one to fall. Peters hustles for the rebound, but on the line. Back over to Connecticut. Didn't take Stephanie Dolson long to reassert herself. They worked on this play this morning where it's straight isolation, and they knew that Notre Dame would guard this one-on-one, -on -one, so why not enter the ball to her? That's strength on strength, and Stephanie Dolson comes out the winner. She has 14. Let's see if they get her the ball again. And indeed, she does. Handing back off for Hartley. The freshman. Tremendous shooting range. Muscada Lewis. Shot clock is at seven. Hartley. Blocked by Peters. Denied defense by the Irish to perfection. Now another scramble. He'll keep it. Out off Muscada Lewis. Now we've talked so often about Connecticut's defense. That 
is a case in point where the Irish defense is tremendous. And, and really, to be honest with you, you could say that across the board. How about Deborah Peters? The patience, he hardly knows she's in trouble. She tries to keep it away from her, but that's as good an athlete as you'll find. You've got four programs here who understand the value of defense and take pride in making the opponent beat them with tough twos. Kelly Ferris also back in the game, the junior from Plainfield, Indiana. Or Connecticut backing down, Peter swooping in. Oh, that's a beautiful shot up and over Dolson. She really went right at it with those four fouls. Love it. And, and again, I'll say it again. She scores. Look out. Take it away. Here's Diggins trying to finish. Notre Dame with a seven point lead. Their biggest of the night. They really need the senior now. Here's Hayes on the drive. Got it. Great job. And that's that's on the right hand side of the floor, going opposite her strong hand. Hayes with seven points, four steals in this national semifinal. Fourth meeting of the year between Notre Dame and Connecticut. They do not like each other at all. Novosel cleans it up. Ochanwa, no foul. Mosqueda Lewis into the offensive zone. Harass, she needs somebody and finds Dolson. How about Stephanie Dolson making two blocks straight up without committing a fifth personal foul? That's a little scary if you're a coach, boy. You're just hoping not to hear a whistle. Those were big time defensive plays with four fouls. No question. Hartley, long three. Ferris with the rebound. Hartley won't wait, another one. That's off the front iron. Dolson there to the other side for two. Tell you what, she's not letting it impact her mind. She's sitting there saying, if I'm going down, I'm going down playing hard, and the Irish have to use one. Muffin McGraw burns a timeout with seven minutes to go. And Notre Dame's lead sliced down to three. Boy, Diggins makes a play defensively. You think it's going to be blowout city, but Dolson makes two blocks. She gets beat. She's caught out of position. No whistle there. Weak side. Could have been another whistle. <laughs> wow, if you're, the, if you're the coaching staff, you are scared to death the whistle blows. Instead, no whistle. She keeps playing hard. And she, yes, ma'am. Play how close on both of those yes. with Stephanie Dolson to sitting for the rest of the night. And Dolson, first four games of the tournament. Look at what she's done tonight. She's been tremendous on the glass as well. And four blocks, but four fouls. Yeah, now, you know, one thing, uh, we've talked a little bit about the altitude. And she looks good here. She had the long break. If the pace goes up and down, do you, do you spell her on a dead ball? This, this is going to be fascinating to watch. Now, both teams have talked about it. In fact, all four have her in the Final Four about the effect of altitude. Diggins on the drive. Off the side of the backboard, she really forced that shot. And she's reacting, wanting to call from the official. Hayes tied up. They call no foul. Hayes really angry. There was no whistle, instead the possession arrow. You can't complain if you're UConn. If you did not get a whistle on the two blocks by Stephanie Dolson, there's no complaining here. Was it a quick one? Maybe. 6.49 remaining here in the second half. Getting fast, getting furious, as you expect between Notre Dame and UConn. Oh, wow. Final four game one back in Denver. Notre Dame on top 58 to 55. They'll have the ball coming out of this timeout. Let's go to Rebecca Lobo. Well, Dave Doris talked about the fact Stephanie Dolson has four fouls. So what is Notre Dame doing? Every single play since Dolson has come back into the game, they have run to get Devereaux Peters the ball. There have been up screens. You'll see Skylar Diggins go up. Get Dolson caught on the screen a little bit. Peters gets position. You want to attack the player with four fouls every single time down the floor. And that is what Notre Dame has done every single possession since we, she's been back in the game. Well, Rebecca, so you're a post player with four, four fouls in this situation. How do you sort of manage playing your game while not picking up that fifth foul? I think you continue to play as aggress aggressively as normal on offense, but I think Stephanie Dolson is playing too aggressively on defense. The officials could have blown the whistle a few times already. Well, Novosel had to make an adjustment there, and that's an elbow that knocks Peters down. Peters goes flying. Boy, this is one they may go to the monitor to take a look at. 6.41 to go. 
Is this a flagrant foul? As the officials huddle on this play, Peters appears to be all right, but she went flying on it. We'll take a number of looks. And as, they will go to the monitor. Yeah, as will the officials. And I like that they can do this. It's on the rebound. Ooh. Yes, I, I think this is going to be a flagrant. I, I think it is. I really do. Well, the question is how excessive it is. I don't I don't think excessive comes in. I do think it could be a flagrant one. And at least listen, this rule was instituted be in part because of the paranoia about concussions. You know, the, the dangerous impact to the head. Now the officials, Denise Brooks, Cameron Inouye, and Dennis DeMeo huddling here after the freshman, Kalina Mosqueda Lewis. I think that's obviously a flagrant foul. 6.41 to go here in the second half. 58 55, Notre Dame on top. We'll bring it up. What's a flagrant one? What's a flagrant two? The flagrant two, the difference is excessive contact during the live ball. They have called this a flagrant one. The illegal elbow above the shoulder. It's the right call. Yep. And Peters with a misfire. Take another look. There is absolutely an elbow above the head. I did not think it was excessive. But I guess if you were Notre Dame, you might say that's close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good argument. So Notre Dame will also have the ball. Doty going to the bench. And a chance to add to the lead. Very quickly, McBride pulls up. It'll go the other way, tipped out off of Peters. So Connecticut down by four, but with it. And Dolson playing with four. She's been the offensive star for the Huskies. Ochanwa returning the 6'3 sophomore. And Peters will sit. Connecticut continues to shoot very well, 49%. They were at 55% at halftime. They need to stop turning it over. They're, they're hurting themselves here in the second half. UConn's turned it over eight times since halftime. Notre Dame twice. Tough catch by Hartley. Up against Diggins. Dolson again, rolling right. And a lot of iron, but that'll roll in. Nice soft touch. Yeah, she's just got tremendous touch. On the face up or back to the basket. Everything is soft on the rim. She has 18. That's a career tournament high for the sophomore. Still to come, Stanford and Baylor. And a dandy that's the number one against the number two ranked team in the country. Baylor number one at 38 and 0. Nobody in the history of the game, men or women, has ever gone 40 and 0. Mallory of the miss. Novosel picks it off but can't get it to go. Here comes Hartley now. Two point game on the drive. Difficult angle. How about McBride going around the back, controlling the ball beautifully? Well, don't rush, though. You know, Novoselic attacked the rim against size. And that, why not bring it out and make Connecticut in an altitude situation play another 30 seconds of defense? How about that? Ochano wide open, wants to get closer. Really nice move, good patience. And, and you know what you know, if you're a Chamba, there's no way Stephanie Dolson's coming over to block that shot. Exactly. Eight for a Chamba along with seven rebounds, a bad pass. They thought Hartley would cut and thrown away by Gino's team. Well, their ninth turnover. And again, that's why the Irish have the advantage. Nice little drive. And you know that you've got the step going and there's no issue there. It's their ninth and a half and 19th in the game. Chandler back to the bench. Stokes is coming on for Ferris. Sixty-one fifty-seven, Notre Dame. That's a tournament high. Nineteen turnovers for the Huskies. McBride right by Dolson. A little teardrop and an offensive foul on Notre Dame. That'll be number two. 
on McBride. So I think Skylar Diggins has got to be the one making those decisions. And McBride's tremendous. She's the third guard who's dynamic off the bench. But I, I want Skylar having the ball right now. Fouls even at seven here in the second half. Will Hartley get the hot hand? Here's Dolson. Hayes tried to save it back over to Diggins. She'll push tempo. Little bump there by Hartley. No call. Heavy traffic again. No whistle. This is played about what we expected. I think precisely what everybody thought right down to the wire between these two rivals. This has become the best rivalry in women's basketball. And there's Diggins. Well, you were calling her out a minute ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I want her to make my decisions, whether it's scoring for herself or getting her teammates involved. She should have the ball. Big shot for Skyler. 63-57, Notre Dame. Muscada Lewis, baseline. Peters just held her ground. And it's kicked away with 3.40 to play. So we have a timeout on the court in our national semifinal game one here from Denver. Skylar Diggins is the nation's best point guard, the Nancy Lieberman Award winner. The ball is in her hands. If you're the Irish, you feel pretty good. This is our chance to make history. We want to show the nation that we are an elite program. This is my chance to be a leader, to leave it all on the floor, and try to lead my team to a national championship. Three minutes and 40 seconds left here from Denver, Colorado. Second half of Connecticut and Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish have a six-point lead. Stephanie Dolson with 18 points, eight rebounds, four block shots for Connecticut. But Deborah Peters and Skyler Diggins and Natalie Novosel all with 14 or more points as we take a look at tonight's Capital One Cup pack performance. Well, she's long, she's athletic, she's the two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. And in this particular instance, just working the weak side of the floor, Novosel can't get it to go. She also, like Dolson, can put it on the deck and go to the rim, an efficient use of that one dribble. Tell you what, when Devereaux's at a high level, this team's really hard to beat. Well, she gets some 12 points, nine rebounds a game, and a superb defender. And a shot block. A shot clock at four for the Huskies. Dolson up against Peters, trying to drive around her. Rebounded underneath, and back up and in by Stokes. Now, the Irish are playing a four-guard lineup, and, and Stokes takes advantage of that on the offensive glass. At any point, does, does the Irish feel like they've got to come back with a channel, or do they play with the four guards? McBride thought about a three-pointer. Notre Dame using a lot of shot clock. Now down to five. Novosel pulls up. A lot of iron, but it drops, and I don't know, those those rims have softened up. Yeah, you know, and they, they talked to her about using her in-between game, the mid-range. Good decision. Mosqueda Lewis able to keep the basketball in her possession, going down on a knee. Two and a half to go here in this national semifinal. Tiffany Hayes, it's time for you to assert yourself. Drives it, spins in, got two. Yeah, I mean, come on, you're the senior. I know you have six turnovers. Your confidence is not rock solid, but if somebody's going to lead him to the promised land, it's got to be a senior. Timeout, Notre Dame, with 2.13 on the clock. Well, Nasty Novosel trying to get back to that national championship. Unfinished business. She is an outstanding offensive player. Use of the mid range, so important when there's been so many charges called. And then Tiffany Hayes. The senior, he's challenged her coach Oriam. A good drive, avoids the defense. A little soft touch, big delivery. Well, neither team has made a three pointer in the second half. Don't forget to tune into ESPN Tuesday night at 7 30 Eastern, our NCAA Women's Championship special presented by Capital One, followed by the national championship game. Now, interestingly, I, I think at that dead ball, Achanwa has now checked in, uh, checked in. So both teams who are very heavy four-guard lineup are now playing two post players. Still to come, undefeated Baylor against 
Stanford, the Cardinal lost only once all year. That was to Connecticut in November. And all four of the schools in this Final Four have won national championships. And that's the first time that has ever happened. Diggins looking up at the shot clock at six. A scramble in midcourt. Diggins holding it and gets the timeout. Not a tie-up, but a timeout Notre Dame. With 1.50 to go. She calls this early, okay? Watch how early Skyler, after she loses the ball, as soon as she hits the deck, she's going to start to call timeout, okay? Watch her. She's going to start right now. Timeout. Timeout. <laughs> it might have been, been a little early yeah. for them to call that because that's a loose ball that easily UConn could have had possession of. She really fought for that timeout. So Notre Dame with the ball with 1.50 on the clock and a four-point lead against Connecticut. But only three seconds on the shot clock, so this is going to have to be a very efficient play here. Sometimes you'll see a team try to enter the ball into the post. I think they're too far up this near half court to make that kind of play. You have time. You can, you can set a screen. You can take a dribble. But you've got to be fairly quick with your hit. What is at stake? Connecticut trying to win their eighth national championship. The inbound. Novosel got it up there. Rebounded away by Hayes. Connecticut trying to cut into that lead. The dish. Ferris hands it off for Mosqueda Lewis. No. Peters with the board. Now you can manage clock and score. The two players most fearless for UConn in these situations are Hartley and the freshman Mosqueda Lewis. Good defense. Ferris with the theft. Hayes trying to contain it. Ferris with the follow for two. Timeout. 119 to go, and Connecticut has cut it to two. They're just unexpected mistakes from a team that played in the national championship a year ago. You understand Connecticut has to come with pressure. And Natalie Novosel dribbles right back into Ferris, who wisely makes the play. No delivery there by Hayes, but just stick with it. I mean, you, you just don't expect these kinds of mistakes from an experienced guard and somebody who played for a national title a year ago. And Kelly Ferris, who brings that Hoosiers mentality to every single game. She won four straight high school championships in Indiana and then won one right away at Connecticut. Yeah, she does a lot of things that don't show up in the box score. Now, what do you have to do? Your Irish, do not let the last possession impact this possession. You have the ball and a two-point lead, and you can put extraordinary pressure on UConn if you score it. So, so perform like the experienced team you are right now. So Connecticut to apply all sorts of pressure here. They've been the best defensive team in the country. Holding opponents to 29.9% shooting. Notre Dame's at 39% in this one. An official delay here. What are they checking? They were checking the possession arrow to make sure that was correct. 119 on the clock. Ochan going to get it in. Here's Diggins. Stay spaced against pressure and get it to the point guard of the year. Back to Mallory. Approaching one minute left in this national semifinal. Notre Dame clinging to a two-point lead. Shot clock at seven. Mallory making a move. Dishes. Ochanwa. No! UConn, Pintyre take the lead. Ferris, a full head of steam and a blocking foul against Notre Dame. 44 seconds to go. That's why we said the charge block would be a significant call. Hard drive by Ferris. Does she get there late? Looks like it. Peters with her third. This is the hardest call in basketball. Any official will tell you that. So Ferris to the line, a 78% foul shooter. And Conley drains the first. And I love that she went right away. She attacked right away because the more possessions when you're down, the better. And she knows that she doesn't want to take a lot of time in case they miss. Stokes comes back on, Dolson sits. So Gino Oriema has two freshmen. 
on the floor at the same time. Mosqueda Lewis and Stokes. Okay, she needs her for the next offensive possession, right? So you don't want her to foul out. You're coming with pressure. Barris ties it at 65. And Stokes the better athlete in that circumstance. They want Diggins to control it every time. Lifts it up ahead for Mallory. I think she's got to go back and get it. Come get it, Skyla. She's hanging out around midcourt. Here's Novacell. Pull up, pop. That won't drop. Rebound free. Hardly has it. 24 seconds left. Tie game at 65. And she lost it. McBride in the offensive zone for Notre Dame. She gives it up. Ferris with the steal. And can't connect. And the whistle. A foul on the play with 11.8 seconds. Kelly Ferris making play after play after play, seizing opportunities, showing mental toughness. A nice dribble drive by Novacell. Diggins was nowhere to be found on that play, so push the pace. Don't use the timeout because you don't want them to dig in. A little miscue there, but watch Kelly Ferris. Diggins with her third foul. Ferris come again at the line. Her heart rate never seems to get very high, does it? And she has just put Connecticut in the lead in the national semifinal. Skylar Diggins has got to want the basketball right now. In the last couple of possessions, she's played a little passive. Go get it. Ferris to put UConn ahead by two. And she does it. 67-65. Smartly extending pressure. Diggins at midcourt. Eight seconds. The leaner. It rolls away. Rebound. Number says she got it to go. Tied at 67. 4.6 to go. Hayes at midcourt. Got to get a shot in the air. Hayes dumps it down low. No shot. And this game is going to overtime. Overtime in the first national semifinal. Tied at 67. She did not get it off in time. Hayes looked pass instead of shot, and they never got one up. What an end-to-end -end sequence on multiple occasions. That's the look that says it all right there. Can you believe this? Overtime tied at 67. Notre Dame and Connecticut, despite the fact that this is their fourth meeting this year, they're not tired of playing each other. Well, look at, interestingly, in that huddle, Skylar Diggins with her head down as she exhausted right now is the altitude having its impact. UConn closed this game on a 9-2 run. The intrepid soul that was Kelly Ferris, I thought Hayes needed to think shot, not pass. One more dribble, I don't care. You've got to get a, a shot at the rim. A soft touch right there, Novacell. How about that presence of mind? This is about making plays. Both coaches said this. This game would come down to players making plays. And Natalie Novacell did. The senior from Lexington, Kentucky, tying the game. UConn had a chance there in the last four and a half seconds, but could not get a shot up before the buzzer. And we go to overtime. We thought it would be a knockdown, drag out fight with two teams who are so intimately familiar with one another. The eighth time in the last two years they have squared off. Yeah. And the rivalry has been tipping toward the fighting Irish over the last year and a half. They've won two out of three this season and knocked Connecticut out of the Final Four last year in Indianapolis. So they continue to play on. Dolson with 18 points. Novacell now with 18 points. None bigger than those last two in the closing seconds of regulation. So a dandy in Denver. Opening tip knocked into the backcourt for Diggins. I agree with you. I was surprised that Skyler was hanging around midcourt. She was too passive. She's certainly not her style. Peter's on the high post. Novacell, a little bang there, but it won't fall. And Connecticut with the rebound. Diggins with three, Peters with three for Notre Dame. 
Dolson thought about the shot. Off for Hartley. Rhea Hartley for three. Nails it. Well, she just cre creates great separation with a little escape dribble to the left. You have Peters, the two-time defensive player of the year, hedge on the screen, change your angle, but Hartley is an intrepid soul. These moments don't shake that kid. Hayes beginning the overtime on the bench. Novosel tied up by Doty, but a foul committed. Watch Bria Hartley just create a little separation with a left-hand dribble. She just backs away from a long athletic defender. And I, I tell you, it's just so much fun to watch Hartley perform when the game is at its most important and when the lights are brightest. She loves it. Great confidence. Novosel with a one-and-one. One. one minute into overtime. Connecticut by three. And it glances away. And Oversell came in to try to rebound, but Ferris got there first. And Kelly Ferris had some big moments, didn't she, down the stretch of regulation? No, oh, just, just unbelievable refuse to lose attitude. I'll make any play necessary for us to win. Oskeda Lewis using the screen by Dolson. That glances away. Mallory with the rebound. She's harassed. Doty picks it up. A theft, but she's on the line. And it'll be Notre Dame ball. Caroline Doty, undaunted, nearly went right into our broadcast position. I think these last 334, who's the aggressor? Who wants to make every dig it out kind of play, the 50 50 balls? Who's more confident? Who's going to impose their will? Caroline right into our cameraman. 3.34 to go in the overtime. How about this for, for a team that Gino Auriemma questioned their toughness after the last regular season loss against the Irish. He questioned their heart and their toughness and their ability to beat the Irish. Diggins beyond the three. She'll fire it up. Got it. Yes, Skyler Diggins. This should be your time. 19 for Diggins. She ties it at 70 in overtime. Oriama looking for his team. He gets the motion going. Here's Ferris to launch. In and out. Rebounded by Mallory. Great look by Ferris, and it looked terrific coming off her hand. Novacell about to report back in now for Michael McGraw. National semifinal, game one, overtime, Connecticut and Notre Dame. The winner to play Tuesday night for the national championship. Pass was tipped to Achamla. Here's Peters. The kick out. Mallory lines it up and knocks it down for three. The three ball's a killer, and it's the last thing you want to give up if you're a defense. You'll give up a tough two, but you do not want to give up that shot. Notre Dame by three. You've talked about the altitude here in Denver and when it starts to really take its toll. How about overtime of the national semifinal? Ferris drives on Peters. Great dish. Dolson finishes. A blind pass airborne by Kelly Ferris. I'll tell you what, you got a lot of players walking up the floor. Brittany Mallard on the right hand side of the floor is walking up the floor. These players have given everything. Stephanie Dolson is in the middle of the paint, huffing and puffing. This is not easy. Ball the steal by Hayes just getting back into the game. Here's Hartley. Diggins with the block. Skyler Diggins denies. Hartley comes from behind her, can't pluck it free. Here's Mallory, a three. Yes! Timeout, Connecticut. It's the first overtime in a national semifinal since 1997. It was Old Dominion against Stanford. Well, how about this? Skylar Diggins makes a turnover you don't expect. But does she put her head down? Absolutely not. She gets back on the defensive end and makes a block. And the last thing you want to give up at this point in the game, this is why, folks, a three-point shot is big time in an NCAA tournament or in college basketball. In overtime, the Irish have hit three. Gino Emma stood at practice 
yesterday and told us the three ball is a killer. And right now his team is under duress of the three balls the Irish, and in particular, Brittany Mallory has put on him. Brittany Mallory has already graduated, the 5'11 graduate from Baltimore. And tough as nails. National championship coming up on Tuesday night. Who will come out of this overtime? Yet to be determined, but Stanford and Baylor are getting ready to play, wondering when that may be. Brittany Griner against Neka Gwumake should be another terrific game. Oh, you've got uh, the most dynamic athletic tandem of forwards in the country in the Gwumake sisters, Cheney and Neka. And very quietly on the West Coast, Stanford has not lost a basketball game since November. Uh, but you know, how about Brittany Mallard? This young woman, uh, I called her linebacker. She objected to it. I don't blame her. But the hits she just delivered with the three, those were linebacker type hits on the offensive end. Well, they sure were. Notre Dame doing it with three pointers when they really hurt the Huskies the most 76 to 72. Now, there's so much time here. It's obviously only a two possession game. So you, you've been tested. You've had to take a little bit hit if you the UConn Huskies, but it's time to deliver one back. But plenty of good three-point shooters. Regina Oriema should have come down to a three-point shooting contest. Kalina Mosqueda Lewis is outstanding, and so is Bria Hartley. Doty can also hit a three, and so can Hayes. But a lot of time before that becomes a major issue, a minute 20. Right, you could go for an easy two, but you've got a tremendous shooter in Mosqueda Lewis. Do you, do you send her off a stagger screen? She has it now, Mallory on her. Falling for Hartley. Hardly at midcourt. Seven to shoot for Connecticut. They're taking a lot of time here. Shot clock at four. Now down to two. Knocked away by Mallory. Taken away by Notre Dame. They forced the turnover. Okay, that's just outstanding switching. I mean, that is as good a defensive sequence as you can have if you're, you're the Irish. Great job defensively. Hardly. On Mallory commits the foul. There's no 10 second backward violation in the women's game. That's four fouls. Now 41.4 to go in overtime. Just watch the appropriate switching. And this is guard to forward switching. But Devereaux Peters understands that they're protecting the three point line. Look it, you cannot protect the three point line any better than the Irish just did. So it'll be Mallory to the line. With 41.1 on the clock, her first foul shots, but a very good free throw shooter. 77-72. Remember that story you told where Muppet said, no matter how bad things are, if I've got Brittany Mallory, I feel pretty good. And she's telling us with her actions why Muppet takes great solace in it. Ben wins that one. Five-point lead. Hayes trying to hustle, slicing in. Not there for her. She's had a tough national semifinal. The whistle with 32.3 to go against Connecticut. And Gino feels it's slipping away here. An opportunity for an eighth national title may be dying here on the floor in Denver. And Notre Dame, they've already beaten Connecticut twice this year, trying to do it for a third time. It'll be McBride at the line. Kayla McBride, who hits 86%, she led the Big East in foul shooting, makes the first. Now, if you're the Irish, you know, do you make or miss, do you extend the, the, the defense just a little bit? I mean, it's very soft pressure just to make UConn come and use some time. McBride makes them both in overtime. Hardly has to get a shot in the air quickly. Muscato Lewis, long range three. Novosel with a rebound, bumped and fouled on the baseline with 22 seconds to go. Diggins and Muffet McGraw can smell it. 22 seconds away from going back to the national championship game for the second straight year. Boy, and you just got contributions across the board. Natalie Novosel rebounded it with authority, pursued basketballs out of her area. The three ball by Diggins when they had to have it. You know, the toughness of Diggins to make a turnover and still retreat and get the block shot. Tell you what, you're going to make mistakes in this ball game, but you've got to just hang tough and keep playing. Novosel, 84%, makes the first. And I wonder what's going through the mind 
of Tiffany Hayes right now, going back to the last seconds of regulation. 4.6 seconds left. She decides to pass and not shoot. Never got a shot in the air, which would have sent them, had she hit it, to the national championship game. They couldn't get it off in time. And now Notre Dame leads in overtime, 81 to 72. 15 seconds left. Muscato Lewis, no. And a foul will go against Hayes with 11.9 seconds left. That's uh, sort of been the, the story of Hayes' career, a little bit up and down. You know, she comes off what was an outstanding performance in the regional final and then struggles with some turnovers and decision-making. By the way, they'll get this foul on Notre Dame, and Hayes was the one who took a fall, and the foul will go against the Irish. And Hayes shooting at 82%. And makes number one. She has 10 in the game. She has been playing with a stress fracture in her foot. Although she had 22 points and eight rebounds against Kentucky. Great game in the Elite Eight. Peters with the rebound and another whistle. With 9.9 .9 remaining in overtime. Peters a little balky getting up. Uh, the graduate from Chicago forcing a smile. And why not? Just seconds away from another appearance in the national championship game. Not sure there's the line. not a lot of cushion on those hips there. <laughs> First team all Big East. Shooting two makes the first. Well, Notre Dame, a very, very good foul shooting team. It's a major weapon for them, and it really was in the second half in overtime. Yeah, they, they've been the better team all year. Let's face it, that's 3-1 to one now in the series this year. And, and Coach Ryan was said it. If the Irish play their best and we play ours, I'm not sure we've got enough. Well, tonight, the Irish play their best. And they're on to the national championship game for the second year in a row. They take the first national semifinal, a final score of 83-75 in overtime. And Skyler Diggins and the Irish are going back to the title game. There was no fear in the Irish. You play a team enough times, I don't care how many national titles, there's not intimidation. And the Irish didn't play their best game, but they delivered in big moments when they had to. They had to play through some, some calls that they didn't get that they normally get in the regular season. I just thought it was a tremendous team win. Contributions across the board. Let's take a look at our Capital One Cup Impact performance with Holly Rowe. Well, Brittany Mallory, you had not scored in the second half. What happened in overtime? How were you able to hit the two threes? You know, my teammates just kept talking to me. You're going to hit a shot. You're going to hit a shot. I was getting a little down on myself. And I just happened to keep finding the three-point line, and my teammates found me, and I, they couldn't have come at a better time. How did you guys turn it around in overtime? At the end of regulation, it looked like you were losing your composure. We knew that we didn't want this to be our last game. We dug deep. We were tired. We were tired. And we fought, and our strength coach was giving us, you know, a hell of a motivation. And I'm just so proud of this team. Thank you. And Coach Muffet McGraw, at the end of regulation, you guys had some trouble getting the ball up the court. They stole it. How was your, able, your team able to regroup right there? Yeah, that was disappointing. We really struggled to take care of the ball. A couple of really big turnovers at the end of regulation. But we really kept our poise in, this, in the second one and did a better job. You said when you see Brittany Mallory on the floor, you get a smile because you know she has what it takes. How do you describe that? I, I am euphoric right now for Brittany Mallory. I mean, what a way for a senior to come through in one of the last games of her career. Second straight year in the national championship, Coach. What does that mean to you? I mean, so much to our program, our team, our fans. I mean, it's just great for Notre Dame. I'm so blessed to be representing such a great school. Thank you. Thanks. Well, Muffin McGraw going for her second national championship. Notre Dame won it all in 2001. And they are the first team in to Tuesday night's championship game. They will get the winner of Stanford and Baylor, which is coming up next here on ESPN. So stay right where you are. Turned out to be a dandy tonight in overtime. Baylor waiting for a chance by Brittany Grinder to take the court. They're the number one ranked team in the country. They're taking on number two Stanford, who has only lost once all year themselves. Wins it in overtime, 83-75 over Connecticut. For the second straight year, they eliminate the Huskies in the Final Four. Notre Dame advancing to the championship game Tuesday night. Nova saw that huge shot in the closing seconds of regulation. 
to make sure the game got to overtime and Mallory took care of the rest. Now we toss it over to Trey Wingo for the college basketball scoreboard show. All right, Dave, thanks so very much. And what was in Indianapolis a year ago is in Denver again. Notre Dame is going to play for the national championship, and they get there by taking out arch rival UConn for the second straight year. Trey Wingo here with Carol Lawson and the coach, Carol Peck. What a game, but don't go anywhere because we've got Baylor and Stanford coming up in just a little bit. Kara, we talked about stars going into this game, but it was those role players that were so critical for Notre Dame down the stretch in regulation with nasty Natalie Novosel and Brittany Mallory and those threes in OT. Absolutely. I thought Brittany Mallory was the player of the game, even before overtime. When you look at the fact that she had to bring the basketball off the court a ton, they moved Skylar Diggins off into the corner on the wing to try and get her good looks at the basket. She played great defense all night long, but what separated Brittany Mallory out was in the overtime shot making. And we talked about you had to have players to do this against UConn's great defense. And that's what Brittany Mallory did. And this was a key sweet sequence in the ballgame, Carolyn, that really tilted the scales toward Notre Dame's way. Well, definitely Skylar Diggins, heads up play, recognizing Brittany Mallory just hit a three, go right back to her. Back to back threes for the Irish gave them a comfortable lead. And listen, you can't say enough about the play of Skylar Diggins. She had the turnover, went back, got the ball back when it was two on one, got the ball back, went back for Notre Dame, and a big three was the result. That really was a five point swing. It was. It, it was the key play of the game. Sure. Right, let's take a look now at the end of regulation that got us to overtime and what went on here as there was a mad scramble underneath as if UConn looked like they were going to take control uh, and when Kelly Ferris made those two free throws and then down the stretch, Notre Dame had trouble delivering the basketball. Notre Dame could not finish the job at the end of regulation. They couldn't do it and it looked like you're right that, that UConn had seized momentum. Notre Dame had a four-point lead, and they turned it over, turned it over, turned it over. This was a wild sequence up and back, and UConn ended up being able to tie the game. Well, Notre Dame, that was, they were very fortunate. Natalie Novosel should have taken that yes. three. Yes. Instead of kicking it back to the top, she's a good shooter. She had a hot hand. She should have taken that three. Well, it's all window dressing now because it got them to <laughs> overtime, but it also eventually gets them into the national championship for the second straight year. Keep in mind, this year is only the second time in Notre Dame's program history where they have been a number one seed. The last time that happened, 2001, they won a national championship. And a team they beat on the way to get to that national championship in UConn. the Final Four? UConn in the semifinal. The UConn Huskies <laughs> in the national semifinal. So Notre Dame is set. As for who they'll play, it'll be either Stanford here for the fifth straight year or Baylor trying to go 40-0 and by getting to 39-0 and tonight. Not too long ago, our Bob Holtzman caught up with the Pac-12 Player of the Year for Stanford, Neko Gwumake.